This is Toad. We knew there were several, but what happened to like the main toad? Is this thing on his head a hat or part of his body? What is that? Was there ever a main toad or was it just several different ones switching out to help Mario? There's reason to believe there is one specific character named Toad, much like how the Mario movie depicts this. But I'm going to tackle this video with the idea that there is one main toad and accept whatever consequences come from that decision. But let's dig a little deeper and see how Nintendo came up with this species and how they go on to support the Mario cast throughout the series. I'm the Mentalk and welcome to Origin Oracle. I have a few more Mario characters to cover before I start diving into all the Zelda lore. It just didn't feel right if I didn't go back and do it. So in the meantime, check out all the Mario videos you may have missed. And you know what? Follow me on Twitter while you're at it because I'm trying to gain some Twitter clout without paying for a blue check mark. Anyway, grab some snacks, relax, and let's head back in time. Toad as a species first appeared in Super Mario Bros. for the NES, released in 1985. And yeah, I won't stop pronouncing it that way. They're originally known as Kinoko Ichizoku, translating to Mushroom People, which all live peacefully within the Mushroom Kingdom, under the rule of Princess Toadstool, or depending on who you ask, the Mushroom King. I talk about this in my Peach Origins video if you want to know a little more. At this moment in time, they weren't officially referred to as Toad in English, but we'll get to that in a second. Bowser comes in and wrecks the kingdom, turns most of the people into bricks and other miscellaneous objects, and for safe measure, kidnaps the princess the only person with the power to reverse Bowser's magic over the Mushroom people. This prompts Mario and Luigi to go on their iconic adventure to rescue Princess Peach, defeat Bowser, and restore peace to the Mushroom Kingdom. Now, all of this is established within the manual, so we never really see much of the Mushroom people aside from a few exceptions. There are seven remaining servants of the princess that are held hostage by Bowser, more specifically called the Mushroom Retainers in the English Instructions Booklet. These are the Mushroom people that we rescue at the end of the first seven of Bowser's castles, giving us the famous line, Thank you, Mario! But our princess is in another castle. On the flip side, the Japanese manual refers to these retainers as Kinopio, which is the official name in Japan for Toad to this day. Shigeru Miyamoto stated he wanted to come up with a name that included a pun with Kinoko, the Japanese word for mushroom, and came up with Kinopio since it sounded good and was easy to remember. He went on to state that he used the name thinking that some people would mistake it for Pinocchio. So if you're ever looking at any of these YouTube videos of footage from Nintendo World Osaka, you'll see that Kinopio Cafe. If that confused anybody, that's what they call Toad over there. Funny enough, before these characters were truly fleshed out, one of the official guides endorsed by Nintendo describes Toad as a female maid at the goals of Worlds 1 through 7. Retainer, Princess Toadstool's maid, is awaiting Mario's rescue. Help her. So is the implication here that this one maid got caught seven times? That's worse than the princess. To be fair, as a kid, I always thought this toad was the same one getting captured over and over again. All right, so what about all the other transformed mushroom people? Are they really the bricks and blocks we see littered throughout the stages in the original game? Yes! In fact, in the English manual, there's a section called Mario's Friends, and I'll read it verbatim. If you come across mushrooms who have been turned into bricks or made invisible, they reward you by giving you a power boost. So these power up blocks were originally intended to be the transform mushroom people helping you out. But I'll just assume the blocks that Mario completely obliterates are just actual bricks. Otherwise we have a problem here. It's also said in the manual that the mushroom people are transformed into horsehair plants, which seems a bit random because that's not an actual plant. But after looking around online, everyone's best guess seems to be that the translation meant to say horse tail plants, which could be these background oval shaped plants located in some of the stages. Now this is normally the part of the video where I go into crazy detail regarding the conception and design of the character, but surprisingly I couldn't track down reliable information on this. But we can say that the original designs for the mushroom people from the first game were repurposed from the mushroom power-ups found throughout the game. So this brings us to the introduction to the individual character of Toad. There is one main Toad and we see him make his debut in the western version of Super Mario Bros. 2 for the NES in 1988. Now this is pretty well known amongst Nintendo fans at this point, but the Japanese Super Mario Bros. 2, later known as The Lost Levels, was dubbed too similar to the original. 
and too difficult for Western audiences. So Nintendo would redevelop a Japanese exclusive NES title known as Yume Kojo Doki Doki Panic to become the Western version of Mario's next game. In the early stages of development for Doki Doki Panic, it was originally a prototype with Super Mario style gameplay in mind, developed by Kensuke Tanabe, one of the developers at Nintendo. They wanted to try out a two-player co-op formula that emphasized vertical scrolling levels and the ability to throw objects. So the focus on these elements explains why this game is pretty different from the original Super Mario formula, but the co-op gameplay would ultimately be scrapped due to technical limitations. Shigeru Miyamoto at the time was Tanabe's boss and had quite a bit of involvement in the development of this title and suggested that they continue to lean into more Mario-like concepts for the end product. Instead of being fully developed as a Mario title though, Nintendo would partner with Fuji Television to create Yume Kojo Doki Doki Panic to promote an accompanying event called Yume Kojo 87. The words Yume Kojo translates to Dream Factory and this was a big event that Fuji TV sponsored to celebrate and promote a new generation of media Media being released in the coming years, including new television shows, different types of technical displays, etc. So Yume Kojo Doki Doki Panic roughly translates to Dream Factory Heart Pounding Panic, which I suppose can allude to the game taking place within a dream world. It introduced and starred mascots from the Yume Kojo event, an Arabian-influenced family comprised of Papa, Mama, Imajin, Lina, Hoki, and Piki. So when this game reached overseas around a year later, all of these characters were replaced by the Mario cast, with Mario replacing Imajin, the balance character, Luigi replacing Mama, MAMA LUIGI?! <laughs> who has a higher jump, which fits since Nintendo already gave him a slightly higher jumping mechanic than Mario in the Lost Levels. Princess Toadstool would replace Lina, Imogen's girlfriend who has the ability to hover for a short period of time, and last but not least, Toad would replace Papa, the strongest and fastest character. Which explains why Toad is an absolute unit in this game. Even though this game was a reskin and made specifically for Western audiences, I'd argue this is one of the most influential titles in the Mario franchise. Not only do the abilities that the Mario cast got from Imagine and his family transfer over to other Mario titles, but a ton of enemies from Doki Doki Panic are now also official Mario characters like the Shy Guys, Pokies, bob -Oms, Sniffits, and Birdo, one of the most highly requested characters that you guys want me to cover. Or it could be the same guy requesting it over and over. Either way, I will get to Birdo very shortly. And this game wouldn't get a Japan release until four years later, and we'd be marketed under the name Super Mario USA, which would also be remade and re-released in Super Mario All-Stars for the Super Nintendo, where the West got the lost levels for the very first time ever. Am I confusing you yet? No. Well good, did you know that Super Mario USA got a sequel in Japan only? It's called BS Super Mario USA and the BS stands for bullshit which essentially was the all-stars version of Super Mario Bros. 2 but not the Japanese version, I mean the US version. But this sequel was a Japanese exclusive so the USA part makes no sense. What the hell does all of this have to do with Toad? I was just kidding about the BS part by the way. That stands for broadcast satellite because this game was for the Satellaview. But if you guys want me to do a separate video on that let me know. So Super Mario Bros. 2, the US version, is the first time we would see the name Toad being used to refer to this character. It would eventually be the standard name for the mushroom people as well, drawing the name Toad from the word Toadstool. It's important to note that despite his artwork for the game having red spots on his head, in-game he's originally depicted with blue spots, which we will use to identify him a little later, so remember that detail. There was an official Nintendo character guide that was published back in 1993 that accounted for Toad's absence in the first game. Toad, aka Little Toady, is a heroic little mushroom retainer who is off visiting relatives in the Fungus Federation at the time of the Koopa War. When he returned home, he found a great many bricks and horsehair plants that reminded him of his friends who had gone missing along with his beloved princess. While I find it interesting that they're mentioning a Fungus Federation, and they refer to the first game as the Koopa War, I'll take all this with a grain of salt. Chao Ji Malio Shang Di Sen this motherfucker don't miss. Y'all didn't know I spoke Chinese. In this title, Toad continues to be cemented as a species in the Mushroom Kingdom, as Mario and Luigi set off on another adventure to save the kings from Bowser and his men in the surrounding lands of Mushroom World. Each of these kings also has Toad as their servant, much like Princess Peach. And it's interesting that we never really hear about these kingdoms ever again after this game, but considering Miyamoto recently confirmed that this entire game was a play put on by the Mario cast, Maybe these kingdoms are just fictional in the Mario universe. 
This would be the first game in the series to introduce an overworld map as well, complete with bonus areas called Toad Houses, and these are mushroom-shaped buildings where Toad, not the main one, will give Mario a choice of one of the three treasure chests, containing a powerful item that can assist him during his adventure. We'd go on to see many iterations of these Toad Houses implemented in several different games across the Mario franchise, serving as a place for item giveaways, mini-games, or maybe a place of rest. As for the main Toad, he's briefly mentioned in the story section of the instructions manual sending best wishes to Mario and Luigi as they set off on their journey. From here on out, we'd see Toads featured heavily throughout the series as the inhabitants of the Mushroom Kingdom. So with that said, I'm gonna shift focus to the Toad character, because he's in a number of spin-off titles like Super Mario RPG, the Mario Kart series, the Mario Party series, and other Mario sports titles, for instance. It's safe to say that the playable Toad in these types of games is our main Toad character. But Toad actually starred in his own spin-off title back in 1994, known as Wario's Woods. Hey yo, what the fuck? Aw oh, man, poor Toad. You get your own game and Wario steals the title from you? This was a puzzle title released in 1994 for the NES and Super Nintendo, featuring Wario as the antagonist, who decides to invade a peaceful forest with his monster minions. Hence, Wario's Woods. So Toad decides to step up to stop Wario because I guess Mario was busy that day. There's not much to say about the gameplay of this title since it's kind of another variation of Tetris, where Toad has to line up monsters with bombs to clear out the board. Birdo also makes an appearance here, helping Toad by providing him with the bombs to clear out the enemies. But once you beat the story mode of this game, Toad destroys Wario's castle, ending his little conquest over this particular set of woods. One of the many failures that would probably drive Wario to go start a small business instead. Now you may have already heard of Wario's Woods, but there was another title where Toad was heavily featured. A series of quiz events called Satellaview for the Japanese exclusive hardware Satellaview. Satellaview, more specifically, was an add-on for the Super Famicom created as a joint effort between Nintendo and St. Giga, a Japanese satellite radio company. And as the name suggests, the Satellaview allowed players to download games and other media through satellite broadcast. And games like BS Super Mario USA had an accompanying audio story that was broadcast to the player while they played through the adventure. So Satellic Hue was a similar concept with the majority of the quiz broadcasts having Toad as the featured character for the events, guiding the player through the quizzes and minigames. Considering how complex this format is, it's amazing that you can still track down audio and gameplay from some of these titles. So there's no shortage of appearances from Toad in Mario spin-offs, but the mainline Mario series is a different story, as Toad can be a little difficult to keep track of. For instance, in Super Mario 64, there are several Toads that are stuck within the castle, but none are distinctly identified as the character Toad. If you check out the manual though, it says in the story section that Princess Toadstool and Toad are missing, so we can only assume that maybe he's one of these Toads trapped within the castle. The Nintendo DS remake for Super Mario 64 rectifies this by identifying the very first Toad you encounter in the game as Toad. And then in Super Mario Sunshine for the GameCube, people believe that this Toad with the red vest is THE Toad since the instructions booklet refers to him as Toad, and he seems to be the leader of the group of Toads that serve as the princess attendants within the game. So I suppose the rule of thumb for a while to spot the main Toad was the red spots on his head and blue vest. But Nintendo went ahead and gave him a red vest in this game to further confuse us. It gets worse. In New Super Mario Bros. Wii, Nintendo introduced a four-player co-op adventure where players can take control of Mario, Luigi, Blue Toad, and Yellow Toad. It refers to them as such in the manual, so these two are not our Toad. And we also see him here in Peach's Castle offering hints to the player. Blue Toad and Yellow Toad return as the playable characters in New Super Mario Bros. U, once again distinguished as Yellow Toad and Blue Toad. Now here's where the confusion comes in. Super Mario 3D World. Once again, it's another four-player co-op game, which I highly recommend, by the way. But this time, you are joined by Princess Peach, who fills the third character slot, and the fourth is Blue Toad. Or is it? They identified this guy as simply Toad, which has fans deciding that this is indeed THE Toad, this time with blue spots. So his normal red color isn't confused with Mario, and it serves as a reference to his first in-game appearance in Super Mario Bros. 2, the US version. Right, I, get it! I mentioned earlier that this little detail would be important, so here is Toad sporting blue spots all over again. Or did he ever actually have blue spots? So his in-game color was originally blue due to technical limitations on the NES. So all the artwork depicting him with red spots at that time was the original intention, and that's why the All-Stars version of the game 
as his updated version with red spots instead. I also can't find a source that these blue spots in 3D World were intended to be a reference to his NES appearance, but much like that version of Toad, he's also the fastest character in 3D World. But this isn't the only time Toad has blue spots. He makes one more appearance this way as a playable character in Super Mario Maker 2 alongside Mario, Luigi, and Toadette. But in this game's story mode, he serves as the taskmaster for construction on Princess Peach's castle, and once again, red spots. So either he can change colors at will, or the blue toad is a different toad. Not to be confused with blue toad from this game. Much like other things related to Mario lore, if you try to get too far into this rabbit hole, you'll find out that you're spending way more time thinking about it than Nintendo does. They did address whether the mushroom shape on his head is a hat or not though, so I can answer that question in this video. So the Super Mario Bros. Super Show depicted him removing the hat in the past. And Toad is also quoted in Mario Party The Top 100 saying, You've come so far, I tip my hat to you, but neither of us wants to see that. But after this, Yoshiaki Koizumi, director of Super Mario Galaxy and producer of Super Mario Odyssey, would go on to say in an interview that the mushroom bulb is part of Toad's head and not a cat. So this is the latest information we have on this controversy right now, so when Nintendo changes their mind again, I'll be sure to let you know. But for anyone who still doesn't believe there is one Toad as Princess Peach's main attendant, aside from the movie by the way, I'll read both the English and translated Japanese descriptions for Toad on Nintendo's website and their Japanese website. A resident of the Mushroom Kingdom who works in service of Princess Peach. Toad has red spots on his head, though others of his kind come in a variety of colors. So here he's referred to as a singular person while referencing the rest of his species. But what about the Japanese description? A resident of the Mushroom Kingdom who works at Princess Peach's side. He also has colleagues who come in blue, green, and other colors. So there you have it. Right now it looks like Toad, as an individual character, does exist. But after reading those profiles, I don't think we'll get to the bottom of the blue version in these games. So while it may be hard to keep track of this Toad, there are more distinct Toad characters that are roaming the Mushroom Kingdom. Like Toadsworth, for instance, who was introduced in Super Mario Sunshine as the trusted advisor to Princess Peach. In Japan, they call him Kinoji, which is a mixture of Kinopio and a suffix used to refer to an old man. He made several appearances in the franchise after his introduction, like in the Mario & Luigi series, Super Princess Peach, New Super Mario Brazas, and Mario Party 7. And then one day, he just died. I'm just now seeing more people question this on social media, rightfully so, because Toadsworth just fizzled out with no explanation. Which is strange, because for a good while it looked like he was going to serve as a replacement for Toad, as Princess Peach's closest and trusted advisor. He even replaced Toad as the host of the Toad Houses in New Super Mario Brazas. And the last time we've seen this guy is Mario & Luigi Dream Team, which was back in 2013. So a full 10 years ago. And I know there is that Mario & Luigi Bowser's Inside Story remake, but since it's a remake, I'm not exactly counting it. If Nintendo could have remade that game without Toadsworth, I'm sure they would have done it. My guy didn't even get to make an appearance in the movie, and you know what's worse? Here is dude in the concept art for the Super Mario movie, standing right beside the princess. What a shame. But he's here alongside two other distinct Toads that are quite popular. Toadette and Captain Toad. So let's tackle them separately. Toadette made her debut in Mario Kart Double Dash for the GameCube to serve as the racing partner for Toad. Her Japanese name is Kinopiko, which is essentially a feminized version of the name Kinopio, so I give the localization team props for Toadette. From her first appearance on, she mainly served as a playable character for several different Mario Kart games, Mario Party games, and other sports spin-offs. And while she's often seen with Toad, they have been mistakenly declared siblings by the Prima Guides for several Mario Kart games. Others have said that they are a couple, which Nintendo has not confirmed to this day. In fact, Koichi Hayashida, director of Super Mario Galaxy 2, Super Mario 3D World, and producer of Super Mario Odyssey, has made it clear that they are not romantically involved. And while Toadette is designed as a female Toad, Ayashida and Miyamoto have said in interviews that Toads are a genderless race that take on gendered characteristics. This is maybe a little bit of a strange story, but we never really went out of our way to decide on the sex of these characters, even though they have somewhat gendered appearances. But I think what I can say is that Toadette and Toad are not siblings. So much like the Yoshis, Nintendo has confirmed that Toads are indeed genderless. Apparently they have no relations to mushrooms, by the way, with Hayashida saying, quote, this particular riddle might stay unsolved. This is the second biggest hypodermic needle I've ever seen! The last major Toad character is Captain Toad, who many have mistaken as the original Toad character. He first appears in Super Mario Galaxy as Toad Brigade Captain, 
joining his crew known as the Toad Brigade to explore the far reaches of space and help Mario in gathering stars to save the universe and Princess Peach from Bowser's clutches. As you're traversing the galaxies within the game, you stumble upon the Toad Brigade a few times where they'll either offer you a star or help you get further into the level. Captain Toad can be pretty easily identified despite having red spots on his head, since normally he wears a backpack and has a giant headlamp strapped to his head. For a while, many people believed this to be Toad having a new adventurous purpose in life, once again assumed by the Prima Games Guide for Super Mario Galaxy. But Nintendo would shoot this idea down, establishing them as separate characters. Hayashida would address this as well in a Q&A on Miiverse back in 2014, saying, By the way, Captain Toad is actually not the same Toad as the Toad who's playable in games like Super Mario Bros. S2 and Wario's Woods. Despite this, Captain Toad would be playable for certain segments of Super Mario 3D World, turning it into a more puzzle-based stage where players would have to collect five green stars in a cube-shaped area without having the ability to jump. Did I already recommend this game? You guys should go play it after you're done with this video. They would take this concept and create a whole new game based around this type of level design and called it Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Yes, Toad finally gets a game and it's based off another random Toad. This game stars Captain Toad, who is joined by Toadette on his treasure hunting adventures. Then a big ass bird named Wingo, who also likes shiny things, steals a star from them and whisks away Toadette as well, kicking off Captain Toad's journey. The story is as simple as any other Mario game, with Toadette and Captain Toad switching out from time to time on being the kidnappee, making them both playable at some point in the story. The director of this game is Shinya Hiratake, who apparently had a dream about the idea, but instead it starred Link instead of Toad. So he made a tech demo with Link as the hero exploring these styles of stages and presented it to Miyamoto, who wouldn't approve it for a full game, but as a compromise included the playstyle in Super Mario 3D World, with Captain Toad as the chosen character due to his heavy backpack that limited his ability to jump. After that, the idea was pushed by Miyamoto for a full-fledged game, and here we are. So do yourselves a favor and grab this game too if you have a Switch. It's a really unique take on the Mario formula, and it's strange that there hasn't been a follow-up yet because this could definitely be expanded on further. There's even some continuity here with Toadette becoming the archivist for the Toad Brigade in Super Mario Odyssey. So I think these two still have plenty of adventures to go on together. So I lied. There's another important Toad out there that may not be well known among Western audiences. This is Kinopio Queen a green-colored toad who was created as the mascot for Nintendo's official LINE account. LINE became Japan's largest social network in 2013, and serves as one of their biggest communications applications extending into other markets like Taiwan, Thailand, and Indonesia. So when Kinopio-kun hit the scene in 2015, it allowed users to text him and a bot would respond with pre-written messages, going as far as giving his thoughts on different Nintendo characters, if you mention their names. Funny enough, Kinopio-kun also makes it clear that he is not THE Toad, but is a friend of his, and he was featured in monthly calendars that users could download from LINE, and was also used to promote big titles over the years like Breath of the Wild, Persona 5 Strikers, and Splatoon. But look at all of these Fire Emblem Heroes illustrations, oh my god! Unfortunately, back in 2021, Nintendo would make the decision to phase out Kinopio-kun from their LINE account. But perhaps one day, he'll make a triumphant return alongside Toadsworth. Maybe. I know I missed the butchered version of Toad in the original Super Mario Bros. movie from 1993, but I did such a deep dive on that film, I'd rather not retread that ground in this video. On the flip side, the Toad established in the recent Super Mario Bros. movie refers to Toad as an individual character and how he evolves into Princess Peach's trusted companion. But he does seem to carry some elements from Captain Toad as well, sporting his large backpack and that thirst for adventure. But one cool thing to note is found within a bio I found for Toad while researching this video. It's his profile from the Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3 Writer's Bible, stating that Toad was left on his own at a very early age and managed to survive on the streets of many magic lands by his quick wit and fast feet. He met the princess when he was delivering pizzas and attempting to sell encyclopedias to the Mushroom Kingdom Palace. She was so impressed by his eagerness to improve himself that she got him a job in the royal kitchen. And I couldn't help but think this matches his movie personality, and while the way he meets the princess may not be the same, it still carries a similar vibe to what's established in the movie. Just some speculation on my part that the movie writers could have taken some cues from this, considering they did draw quite a few elements from the Super Mario Super Show. Let me know in the comments below your favorite member of the Toad Clan, and of course feel free to include any information I may have missed because there's a lot of it. But until next time, everyone, be safe. The Prophet has spoken.